tell us, uh, update us on, on what's happening with the, the, the characters from the film. Uh, it's, uh, I don't, I don't, when did you stop uh, shooting? Over a year ago. I stopped shooting in, uh, in January, and then the film in February was in uh, Berlin. Oh my so my last, last, uh, we, we were also editing in Lampedusa, so somehow I wanted the, uh, the editor to come there. I told him it was like a, uh, we needed to have a method editing, not to be really immersed in the island. So since at uh, the beginning to the end, it was one and a half year since I started shooting at the end. Well, the, I just spoke a few minutes ago with Dr. Bartolo. He's in the Lampedusa on his duty every day. He just confirmed that every day people arrive there constantly. And just last week, uh, the 360 people died outside Lampedusa. So unfortunately, the number since uh, uh, I finished shooting and I brought down 15,000 people Right now, the update number from the Minister of in Interior in Italy is like 20, 27,000 people. So just this year, you know, there were at least uh, seven, eight thousand 8,000 people. That which we know since January, because people somehow, you know, they just go and you never know. Because unfortunately, since the border of Lampedusa was brought into the middle of uh, the sea, People, they don't arrive anymore straight. They don't land offshore like they used to do before, like straight from Libya to, to Lampedusa. Um, so there's a, this patrolling of the Navy. So the boats are somehow intercepted or rescued in the middle of the sea. And then people are brought into Lampedusa, where they stay two, three, two, three days. And then they are brought back to Italy, where they start all this process uh, to become recognized as a political refugee. So Lampedusa is still a beacon of freedom where people escape from all kinds of tragedy. And more and more and more uh, people encounter death on this journey of hope. And uh, that's what the film wants to be, like a cry of help. It's, it's unacceptable that people die under this condition. Uh, these people are victims or all kind of criminals. You know, This journey, they cost $1,000, $2,000 for, for a journey that you never know where it's going to take you. So it's a really big tragedy. And unfortunately, politics is completely absent in this moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have time for one or two questions here. Um, just raise your hand. Yes, right here. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Well, uh, he was one of the first people I met. Uh, when I arrived in Lampedusa, I was very surprised that there was no uh, communication between these two worlds, you know, the migrants and the people of the island. As I say, four years ago, maybe Samuel would have been playing football with a Nigerian kid. Right now, it's not happening. So there's this uh, division, which I wanted to underline also in the film, these two people, two group of people that I barely touch and they never really interact with each other. So when I was there, it was very difficult to see how I was going to shoot this film. And of course, my attention was like I wanted to switch the point of view on the island of Lampedusa and shoot the, uh, the crisis of the migrants through the eyes of the people of Lampedusa. And when I met Samuele, uh, completely by chance and in a very random way, he was playing with his slide shot and he was very much uh, talking to me about how much he, he say how difficult it was for him to live in an island of fishermen and being a hunter himself, you know, so. <laughs> And how difficult it was for me, like hating the sea and suffering seasickness, becoming a fisherman was something of his own uh, uh, tragedy in life, you know. So uh, he's really tiny little kids. And I've, when I start talking to him, he said, look how good I am. He put the broom really far away. And he's like, boom, he centered the broom there. And he turned at me and said, you need passion in life. <laughs> and since then, I decided to follow him. And slowly, slowly, he became somehow and in, like almost like an interior guide for me, because when I was filming him, there was opening up his world, was opening up to this metaphor, the war, the thing when he designed the cactus faces, you know, it's like, it's what we do, we inventing the enemy. When the cactus is cut and he put the tape around the cactus, it's like exactly what we do in, uh, you know, adults. <laughs> okay, we patch the problem and we go somewhere else. The lazy eye. Uh, the anxiety. So it's basically <laughs> became this um, common of age story, you know, this kid that is uh, cannot interface with the harshness of life, with the unknown of life. So for me, it was exactly the same kind of mood uh, that uh, I had been in Lampedusa, feeling that there was uh, uh, a tragedy arriving there. The echo of these voices constantly that you feel it in the island, but not know how to inter interact with all this. Uh, and how to tell this. So the so more and more, Samuele became for me like the red thread of the film. And as, you know, 
I say it was a journey that which lasted more than a year of filming him. And uh, and um, so for me it was like a guide. And then of course there's Dr. Bartolo, who is the link in between these two worlds, you know? This was very important uh, uh, piece of the story. I think through Dr. Bartolo, we kind of arrive accepting the tragedy that is in the film, which is death. And that was one of the last uh, image that I shot. Uh, and uh, it was very harsh for me to go down there and film that, but I wanted to do that because I wanted to know to know about this tragedy. And when I told my editor I cannot film anymore, we have to deal with the editing, with the material I have, which were like three stories, basically the story of this rescue, the story of the migrant that arrived in the island, the story of Lampedusa. I said, we have to, to, to start editing. And, but I want this 30 seconds to be in the film. So somehow the whole film was built to give a narrative arch to arrive to this point of the death, and not only to arrive to the death, but also to be able to live and to dig dignity to the death, uh, to a mourning, and also to the people that I was filming in Lampedusa. So it was a very challenging editing. Uh, probably time for one more who, uh, yes, yes, sir. The last song, the Exodus of uh, Rossini, the, the opera. Well, that, that was, um, <laughs> I was in the radio, uh, you know, once in a while I was sp sp spending time at the radio and, uh, and Zia Maria was always calling and then I met Zia Maria, so <laughs> it became this kind of inter dialogue. People asked me, well, how did you shoot with two camera? No, Zia Maria had three, four songs that she always asked every day. <laughs> <laughs> the same song, so it was very easy to, <laughs> to make the, the dialogue between the two of them. In fact, when I was in Lampedusa for the screening, uh, I was in the car with some friends, and at the radio, there was Zia Maria asking for a song that is in the film. And this friend of mine, he was like, what's going on here? It's like being in your movie. And we arrive at Zia Maria place to say, so let's go stop at Zia Maria to say hi to her. So I go there, and she's there having a coffee with the husband, sitting exactly with the same shirt, with the same thing at the table, <laughs> listening to the song of the film. It was completely surreal, you know? <laughs> so, but the music somehow for me was an important element of narration because that's the only way of communicating to the island also the tragedies, you know? So also in Lampedusa, which is there in the front line of this, people know about this through the radios. So Lampedusa is like the rest of the world. It's become this imaginary place, almost this, uh, this place of the head, you know? For me that also in Lampedusa, people know about this tragedy through the radio. And uh, 250 people die, all poor people, and then we keep doing the, our own things. And this is only number. And I hope that with the film, it comes out that these are not only number, but uh, these are people. When, for me, one of the most tragic moments is the sound that I was listening constantly when I was there, this call for help from the middle of the sea. Please help, help, help. And then the, the guy had to say, what's your position? What's your position? Which, which are your coordinates? And you know, People ask me, <laughs> what do you want this film to do to people? I say, I would like people to come out from the screening room and ask themselves, what's my position? What can I do uh, towards this tragedy here? And if 20 people, 30 people tonight go out with this feeling, then it was worth making in this film. Well, that's probably about where we have to close. I do want to tell you guys, uh, this is part of the shortlist section, which is you know, what we at DocNYC think are the, 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 the most important in, in, in the best films uh, from the documentary world of the year, and so uh, uh, this, is, this is a really special film. As it turns out, uh, we opened it at IFC Center several weeks ago. We're still playing it, so uh, I encourage you to, uh, to tell your friends uh, uh, that it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful, poetic film that's going to enrich the way they understand the world that we live in and that they can go see it in a theater uh, right now um, and have the experience you did. So, John Franco, thank you thank for you being so here. Thank you so much, and thank, thank you for, for being here. Thanks, thank you.